Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. I don't do this often, so this is a bit of a special occasion. This week's theory is actually going to be something of a follow-up to last week's. In last week's theory, I postulated that Lars might be a character parallel to Rose Quartz, and that likewise Sadie might be a character parallel to either Greg or Pearl, concluding, in part, that if Sadie is meant to be an analog for Pearl, she and Lars probably aren't going to end up together at the end of the story. This week, as weird as it sounds, I'm going to try to determine who it is that Lars is going to end up with instead, using possibly the tightest and most concise evidence that I have ever come up with for one of these theories. We have several potential options. If Lars really is a parallel for Rose, it would make sense that him as a human would end up with a gem, the exact opposite of Rose when she ended up with a human, i.e. Greg Universe. And Lars is on an entire ship full of gems now. It isn't totally far-fetched to assume that Lars might end up with one of them. So let's run through our candidates of gems that we have seen interacting with Lars since he became this new and improved pink Lars and remained behind on Homeworld. Let's start with the most unlikely candidate, Fluorite, the multi-gem fusion. First of all, no offense to Fluorite, She's just not very physically appealing from a human sensibility. Her form resembling a giant caterpillar just isn't one that I feel like Lars would ever be drawn to. Her personality is very grandmotherly, so I doubt that he'd be drawn to that either. And put simply, Fluorite, like Garnet, is already a relationship. She's a polyamorous romantic relationship. And while she is open to additional gems becoming part of that relationship, she didn't say anything about humans, and I think that was for a reason. There's the more humanoid Rhodonite, but a similar problem presents itself itself here. Rhodonite is, again, already a relationship between a pearl and a ruby. It's not explicitly said that it's a romantic relationship, but we're meant to assume that it is. She is portrayed very much like Garnet in that she is portrayed as a romantic fusion. A romantic permafusion, just like Garnet, specifically. That leaves one or more of the Rutile twins, but I don't think that they're really likely candidates either, as I see them having too strong a platonic bond with each other to really be concerned with romance. And, of course, Pad Paraja Sapphire, who is being coded much much younger than our Sapphire, and so the idea of her ending up with Lars just doesn't sit right with me. Maybe she will, but it just seems kind of odd. It's not something I want to consider. So having effectively eliminated all of the gems that Lars has met since he ended up on Homeworld, aside from the gem lawyers and the diamonds, who I'm not including in this for obvious reasons, where does that leave us? What candidate could I possibly be envisioning for a future Lars romance plot? Taking us once again to the promo for an upcoming episode featuring Lars as a space pirate opposing Homeworld, allow me to introduce some of you and reintroduce more of you to the character of Emerald, a gem who is in pursuit of Lars, who seems to be sort of Lars's nemesis at this point. The dialogue between the two of them implies a history of Lars waging a sort of guerrilla war against Emerald and her forces, and winning. We don't know much about Emerald yet, we don't know much about her personality except that she gets very angry at Lars very easily, again probably stemming from this implied history between the two of them. But her design is pretty telling in a lot of ways. She seems to be designed as a reference to a character from a show that the crew universe references a lot, that being Dragon Ball Z, one of the most popular and, dare I say, infamous anime series in existence. Emerald's design seems to be invoking the early designs for the character Vegeta. Vegeta, when he had this design was a villain, but eventually he became an anti-hero and then a straight-up good guy. As this transformation occurred, his design was likewise updated, so this original design for Vegeta is only associated with him at the villain stage. This is interesting in that it suggests that Emerald might become an ally to the Crystal Gems, or to Lars specifically maybe, later on in the story, and that the transition from villain Emerald to sympathetic ally Emerald might come with a regeneration. But AJ, you may be asking, what about all of this makes you think that Emerald might have a romance with Lars. Well, put very simply, one of the things that marked Vegeta's transition to a hero was his relationship with a character named Bulma, a character who was introduced to the Dragon Ball canon much earlier than Vegeta himself, and who has a very odd hair color for a human just like Lars does. Granted, the similarities between Bulma and Lars end with their odd hair colors, but the similarities between Emerald and Vegeta end with a few design commonalities and the fact that they're aliens, so it's not like the two of them really have much more in common. I think 
that Emerald is going to become a good guy, probably over the course of a season or two, assuming that Steven Universe has that many seasons left, and that as she is transitioning into this new role as Hero, she and Lars are going to strike up a rapport and eventually form a romantic bond. My only issue with this theory is that it relegates Sadie to the role of Yamcha, a Dragon Ball character who was Bulma's original love interest and eventually became just one of her good friends. The reason this is a problem is because no one deserves to be compared to Yamcha. It's just is mean. Yamcha is that pathetic of a character. Anyone out there who knows Dragon Ball at all will know exactly what I'm talking about. Still, I think this theory is pretty solid. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of half joking in case you guys hadn't caught on, but still, it's possible. I mean, it's not really likely, but it is possible. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to move on from this now, in the hopes that ending this quickly inspires you guys to put down your torches and pitchforks. I promise a much more serious theory next week. It's just, every once in a while, I gotta do something a little fun. I'm sure you guys know how it is. I hope you enjoyed this slightly more jokey than usual theory either way. Whether you did or not, let's get a discussion about it going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.